Hello. Today's video will be a review for a very nice Asus VivoBook Slate laptop. It's actually a convertible, so it can work both as a laptop and as a tablet, which I think makes for a very interesting uh, product. The laptop has been launched in uh, 2021. I have been using it for almost eight months and I delayed making a video first of all because there were so many things I wanted to understand better about the product and about um, its features. In most videos you're going to see a mixed perspective that centers a lot on uh, the performance issue because the laptop although it has very good specifications primarily in the terms um, like a display however uh, the processor may not be as fast as you may like and I wanted to have a very good grasp of what may be the issue and I delayed making a video because I think that even this aspect as the product is being uh, available on the market can be solved to some extent. All right, so without further ado, let me um, present the product itself. The laptop has a very nice uh, case, as you can see over here. This is the, the keyboard part. And it also has a stand. Uh, the stand can be easily placed and taken out from the laptop because it has a magnetic side that very easily binds with the one of the laptop. It also has a camera because, of course, it's um, also a tablet and can be used as such, although I don't have very high expectations in terms of uh, quality. And it has a set of ports, as you can probably guess from here. We have um, phone and microphone jack because I think it's a dual purpose jack, three and a half mil jack. An uh, USB C and display port output, of course, if you have the necessary uh, cables, that also can be supplied with uh, power. The second such port, also USB C. And the SD micro, the micro SD card slot for increasing uh, the storage capacity or for using it in various purposes. On the right side, we have the volume controls, some vents, um, but I assume those are made for speakers. Of course, you have noticed the Dolby Atmos logo, so it's a laptop that is specified to have a very good uh, audio quality. We will not probably have the right means to test this, but um, from my experience, I can tell that um, it's um, a good quality for a product of this size and of this price. And the power on off button. And I think we have presented just about everything that could be about the laptop itself. And of course, we can uncover it and see what lies beneath. The cover, the keyboard cover is being kept with a magnetic latch or could be seen as being um, kept with a magnetic latch button. Of course, this happens too little to matter. So I'm not considering it a very tight fit. But I don't think that is a problem because ultimately you will carry the laptop either on your bag or using another one that is being supplied. This is the standard bag that is being supplied with the laptop. You can also see the power adapter that has the USB-C typical connector. And you also receive a um, pen that you can use with the, um, with this convertible laptop and tablet solution. And if you look closely on the inside, you will be marveled at the screen. 
The screen, of course, has a glossy surface uh, finish, um, mainly because it's also a touch screen, and as you might have expected, this is very important. And you also have the typical keyboard that includes the trackpad. So overall, I think that the product itself looks very nice. And if you watch closely, you will also notice that there is a camera that a front camera supplied with the screen. And I think that um, those are microphones and probably that's the gist of the laptop. Alright, so uh, let's start the product and let's see what we can do with it. Before that, I would like to have an important mention about the pen. The pen being supplied makes for a very good keyboard, uh, keyboard uh, laptop and uh, tablet solution. Although I'm not considering to be entirely up to the level you may expect from top of the line tablets, but I think this is not going to be an issue. So let's plug in the laptop. All right. I'm not using the adapter that was being supplied with the laptop, first of all, due to convenience. I have to make a separate mention because this kind of adapter may sometimes be less comfortable to use because um, it forces you to have a particular space in, uh, in the socket. And if you don't have the necessary amount of space, I think that it may not be as uh, pleasant as you may think. What are the specifications? Well, it's a um, 65 watts adapter, I think, more or less. Yes, I think that is a correct way to present it. If you look closely over here, it's not particularly a large or a powerful power adapter, but it's one that is more than suitable to charge the laptop and the uh, inside battery, and of course, uh, provide uh, the necessary amount of power for the rest of the system. And the bag itself, which has a zip and has quite a good overall uh, quality. It's made probably out of uh, synthetic leather. It looks very nice, it's fashionable, so I think that overall the laptop fares very well in this respect. And when you are taking, when you are taking it apart, you can see that it has the right amount of space to hold the laptop. I'm not using it because primarily I'm using the laptop as a standalone system. But I think that being provided with such a, a product right away, and particularly when uh, the market has not evolved to offer such third party solutions, I think it's very welcome. All right, let's look at the product itself. I'm going to use the stand. You can change the angle so that uh, the laptop is um, having a higher or a lower position. Um, in my experience, I think that it's quite a good stand, but um, probably it would have been better if it had possibilities to change the angle more. All right, we were reasonably decent setup. Of course, taking a, into account the fact that it's quite difficult to avoid the impact of uh, reflections. Let's look upon the model itself and see what it's capable of. So I'm going to start the laptop and then comment on the rest. First of all, you can see the keyboard quite clearly. It's um, a reasonably long uh, travel keyboard from considering the fact that uh, the keyboard's construction is quite shallow, so you couldn't use a keyboard that has a higher travel. And you can also um, have quite a decent, in fact, I think it's quite a large trackpad, as you can reliably see. 
So overall, I think that the, the product fares quite well. The sensation on the trackpad is quite nice. And uh, the laptop itself also has uh, a touchscreen. I'm going to increase slightly the brightness so that you can uh, see it better and probably have less chance of uh, noticing reflections, although this will not probably solve all the issues. First of all, uh, the most important part for this laptop is the fact that it has an OLED screen. And I think this is the biggest selling point for a laptop that ultimately is available for around um, 750 euros or dollars. And um, make no mistake about it, the, the screen is actually uh, spectacular. And I think that uh, with a laptop that has this kind of uh, format, it's a fantastic choice. And also you have to consider the fact that the price itself is not um, something that would be a hindrance to, to a purchase. So ultimately, I think that um, the screen is very good. And uh, you should be able to uh, enjoy it as much as uh, possible. All right, so uh, let's move further and see what um, we can do with, uh, with such a laptop. But first of all, let me present to you some specifications. This laptop is uh, the VivoBook Slate T3300. Uh, it's the top of the line specification, which in some respects, I think it's the only one that is reasonably uh, understandable as a purchase. First of all, um, due to the fact of including 8 gigabytes of memory. The entry level uh, VivoBook Slate um, convertible has only 4 gigabytes of memory. And right away, I think that it, this is the biggest mistake that could be made because um, having such a low amount of memory is going to be um, unacceptable. And I'm going to show to you precisely why. If we are going in into Task Manager, we can see right away that at least two ends uh, almost 3 gigabytes of memory uh, being used by the system. This means that um, just opening a browser could almost take up uh, the entire uh, memory space. And I think that 4 gigabytes of memory would not be understandable with such a product. So this would be my first uh, reasoning for not uh, choosing at all to have such an amount of memory. So 8 gigabytes is the minimum recommended and the maximum also that is available. Next, uh, the laptop is being supplied with Windows 11, which is a very good choice considering the improvements that Microsoft made since Windows 10 and um, the features that are made available. I think that the response time is quite well. Of course, the, this laptop has been improved uh, to some extent. Uh, to some extent by making sure some um, additional software that was installed on it was removed. But overall, it's not very far from the experience you would have normally with, uh, with such a laptop. It's being supplied with Windows um, 11, and I mentioned that as being an, uh, an advantage from my point of view, particularly for a touchscreen model or for one that pertains to um, having a tablet uh, purposes because the tablet interface is quite well improved in Windows 11. Of course it was uh, present uh, in Windows 10 but I think that some improvements um, really make the case for Windows uh, 11. And um, ultimately I think that the tighter integration between the hardware and software is uh, the most important advantage over here. The processor. Well, here comes uh, a part where we are having some issues because the processor um, first has to be constrained by the form factor of um, a laptop that is essentially in a tablet frame. So everything has to be contained in this upper uh, chassis and um, the amount of cooling that is available is uh, highly limited. You have to use passive cooling and you are limited to mostly a 7 watts uh, TDP uh, processor, which means that you have to make a lot of performance uh, compromises. And this is perhaps one area where um, Windows laptops or Windows tablets still have a major issue, because Intel was not able to make processors that are 
um, as power efficient as uh, the ARM ones that are being used in um, Android tablets. It and of course the operating system Windows is very complex and not as optimized for this uh, form factor. It means that the processor, um, the amount of processing power being made available and, and how it's being used is uh, to some extent uh, an issue. I think that this is not necessarily a particular concern, but one that you have to uh, keep in mind. Don't expect to have the same amount of um, capability you would have in traditional uh, laptops or even in more advanced uh, convertible laptops because ultimately uh, the format being used over here and the, the processor being used is the, the main culprit so there is very little that can be done. It's an Intel Pentium uh, Silver N6000 processor at 1.1 uh, GHz with um, a turbo speed that can reach 3.3 GHz. It has four cores. I think that uh, the biggest issue over here is the fact that um, the processor itself can be considered somewhat um, similar to, um, let's say, uh, two or three generations um, ago, uh, Celeron processors that were used in um, computers that were not as powerful as you may uh, be hoping. Of course, it's not at the same level at which some Intel Atom offerings were before in um, uh, netbooks, but you have to understand the fact that it's uh, quite uh, limited in terms of performance. You're going to notice uh, sluggishness and um, the amount of um, flexibility you have when using uh, the battery may not be up to your uh, liking. However, let's get back again to the major selling point. It's an OLED laptop. And I think this is very important because mm, when you are um, highly concerned on your artistic endeavors or even if you are not um, so focused on that but you like very high quality screens, there is no denying that an, that an LCD screen can never be up to the same level of quality, contrast and color reproduction as an OLED screen. And uh, in this respect there is nothing to be concerned about. It looks very nice and I think this is uh, the most important uh, aspect and the major draw to, to, such a, to such a product. Besides, of course, the capabilities of being used uh, as a tablet and having a very good uh, touch screen that is responsible enough in most uh, situations. So, um, let's continue with the specifications. The graphics chipset, of course, it's a very limited uh, Intel um, Ultra HD graphics. Uh, you can expect a very low performance with such a chipset and ultimately the form factor that requires passive cooling means that um, you can have a very high performance. You have to understand that uh, for an integrated graphics chipset, this one will uh, feel even more uh, limited than in a typical uh, form factor in a typical laptop that is around 13 or 14 inches um, in size and you can have you can have too much uh, complaints about it next um, the display it's a 13.3 inches full hd screen so it has um, quite a good uh, display density and uh, performance um, it doesn't have um, a refresh rate of um, any higher than uh, 60, which means that uh, if you were hoping for a 120 hertz screen and you were uh, hoping for a specific, um, a particular smoothness in uh, uh, motions, you will not have that. But for the purpose um, at which this laptop is being uh, used, I don't think it's a problem. The most important part in uh, terms of certifications is that this is a DCI P3 color gamut. Uh, certified screen. A VESA certified one, which means that um, blacks and the color reproductions are simply spectacular. And I cannot uh, show you well enough this uh, aspect and only going to um, show uh, color palette is not going to be uh, enough. But um, 
you have to experience OLED uh, laptops to um, be, uh, be truly um, admiring of such features. Alright, so uh, let's move uh, on to... You may have noticed a slight uh, sluggishness because ultimately, as mentioned, everything that um, attempts to use the laptop's processing power a bit more is going to end up with uh, certain uh, issues. So this is one of the concerns. On the, um, on the internet and many persons that have reviewed such models have mentioned the fact that uh, you can change the power settings and this would probably mean that uh, changing the power profile will bring more performance. However, as far as I can tell, um, this is only good to a certain extent. You can change the um, power mode to best performance, you can try and improve certain aspects, but it's still not going to feel as a high performance uh, laptop on one or one that works uh, um, with a very good um, fluidity. However, I don't think that this is an issue. So, let's uh, mention also the storage before uh, getting into the performance test. This laptop can be either supplied with 128 GB uh, uh, MMC or uh, NVMe storage solution. Unfortunately, as far as I can tell, um, the 128 GB the solution is quite limited because you have to understand the fact that installing the operating system and updating it constantly requires at least 64 gigabytes so you're not going to have a lot of space available for uh, your uh, programs and other stuff you want to, to have. On the other side, I don't think that this is uh, such a major issue compared with uh, the one uh, for memory. 128 gigabytes is usable. This model has the highest uh, specification and uses around uh, and has uh, 256 uh, gigabytes uh, storage. As you can see, having not a very complex installation could require, uh, could get you over 128 gigabytes, and I think that 256 is a very good solution. Unfortunately, um, Despite uh, my hopes, and of course I knew that uh, in advance, uh, unfortunately storage uh, doesn't seem to be um, user accessible, which means that you cannot replace the storage with a higher capacity one, despite the fact that it's an um, NVMe um, storage solution. I assume that this is due to the form factor of the a laptop that doesn't uh, allow a different uh, mounting uh, system and uh, other um, special amenities. So this means that you have to make do with the amount of storage you have available. All right. And um, the USB co connectors that are on the left side, as mentioned, are uh, USB uh, 3.2, which means that you have a very good performance. You also have uh, Bluetooth and uh, Wi-Fi 6, and I think that this is one of the major uh, draws to the, to the laptop as well, because it has very good um, communication capabilities, a Wi-Fi 6 um, out of the box with um, quite good uh, performance, I think is uh, highly appreciated. You also have uh, Bluetooth, which I think is Bluetooth 5. The battery itself is a 50 uh, watt hour uh, free cell lithium ion uh, battery. Mm, from my experience, I can say that the amount of uh, autonomy you can expect with such a battery is probably most likely uh, 5 hours, despite the laptop's um, materials that may suggest a higher um, autonomy. I think that uh, this in in most uh, in a typical use scenario uh, is more than enough. And you have a very large uh, array of um, features that are being uh, offered. But 
Also, let me tell you something about the pen because I presented itself. Being supplied with a pen, I think, uh, from my perspective, is a very good design choice or uh, marketing uh, approach because you have a reliable combination of hardware that is being uh, used. You have um, an USB-C to USB adapter, which in some cases I think is not perhaps the best choice you, you would uh, think of. And I will give you immediately um, an explanation for that. Uh, think about the fact that you could not power the pen and charge it with the laptop. You would have to use a different power adapter that has a USB-C connector or you would have to use another cable that could be plugged in the laptop and um, have the same connector on the other end so that you can power the, um, the pen and charge it. And I think this is a, a small mistake that was made in uh, product uh, design. And in order to charge it, you have to go and plug it over here. Um, the build quality of the pen is not perhaps the most important part I can clearly assess in terms of uh, quality. I think that the pen itself feels um, reasonably uh, heavy and has um, a durable construction that can be um, felt uh, to quite a good uh, quality level, so I don't think this one is an issue. Uh, sensitivity I think is pretty good and I'm going to demonstrate that by making a short attempt at writing something. Of course I do not have um, the talent in order to draw something else that may be better suited for such a task. I think that the input lag is uh, quite alright in most uh, cases. But, of course, you may notice a certain slowdown. But if you think about how well you can uh, make your uh, creations, I think that you can reasonably uh, expect uh, uh, quite a good capability. Okay, so I made a mistake and I tried to erase it. <coughs> of course, it's not perfect, but in terms of uh, quality, I think it it handles quite uh, well. I should have been a person with uh, much uh, higher uh, capabilities in order to correctly assess how good um, the ability to use it as a graphics tablet is. But I think that this is enough for the test purposes. Um, the pressure that must be applied on the screen is uh, light enough, so you can make quite good uh, tracking. Uh, there are multiple tips that are available. As you can see over here, there are three, um, three tips based on uh, the international uh, standards, so H, H, B, B, that make for different um, um, toughness when um, being uh, used on the screen. So I think that it's uh, it's quite nice to have these uh, options and in order to remove a particular tip you have to use this uh, system and slide it so that it uh, ends up being disengaged from the, from the rest of the pen. Overall I think that it's uh, nice and I think that for artists in particular is going to be a very good um, product that has all the features you may, uh, you may want. And think about, again, it's a laptop that originally was being sold at uh, around uh, 750 euros or around 800 dollars, which means that um, it started off uh, quite on the affordable end for uh, such products, especially when you consider all that is being supplied with uh, the product. All right, I'm going to uh, close this document.
and let's look upon the performance capabilities. So let's start the, the test. I'm going to use the typical um, Passmark performance test because I think it's going to show enough of what the, the laptop is uh, capable of. Okay. And as soon as this initial phase is going to be over, I am going to run the test. You can see around 500 frames per second while running this screen. This means that the graphics performance is not um, very bad, of course. There is nothing too complex being shown over here. But uh, to have a rough comparison, probably you can expect um, a higher performance laptop to reach around um, 900 frames per second or even go uh, beyond the 1000 easily. I think that this one is uh, good enough brightness level. As you can see it can go to high, uh, high levels and I think that this is going to be one of the most important selling points for such a laptop because ultimately it maintains the same uh, fantastic contrast that you're going to see. Okay, so I think that and this is a good enough uh, result, so let's uh, start the demo. I'm going to just place it a bit higher, okay? And let's see, something in between. And right now let's run the benchmark. I think that the most important um, aspect when considering these benchmarks is that most of the performance is going to be coming from a mix of um, synthetic and um, reasonably accurate uh, real-life tests. In terms of processing power, as I already mentioned, it's quite a limited processor, so I'm not uh, expecting anything that uh, can be considered spectacular. On the other side, I think that the laptop's uh, strengths come when uh, we are talking about uh, the screen itself and partially when we are considering uh, the, the format is being uh, used. You may not um, admire enough the technical solution that is being offered when I mentioned the fact that there is no cooling fan, it's passively cooled. This means that no matter where you're going to use the laptop and how much you're going to use it, there is never uh, the risk of having a fan that um, is going to make any noise or that uh, will uh, wear out as uh, time goes by. So with these constraints in mind, I think that uh, the performance has to be appreciated for what it is. I have to say another aspect, and uh, that is in um, 2023, which is almost uh, two years since uh, the launch. The launch was made in November 2021, if I remember correctly. Uh, there is a refresh being um, made by uh, Asus that will probably offer um, an improved uh, performance uh, by having a higher spec uh, processor and one of them I think is going to be an i3 uh, CPU that will have uh, 8 cores. I don't have any sort of uh, indication right now regarding the performance. I'm expecting the bump to be around 50% uh, better because uh, the processor uh, that is offered as uh, an upgrade for um, the mid-spec uh, version is going to um, have a performance increase that is um, around 40%. Uh, so I'm expecting the higher spec one to be uh, around 50%. Of course, those are expectations. We may see uh, better or worse performance 
uh, in time, but ultimately I think it's going to be an improvement that, is, that will be highly appreciated. Another important aspect I would like to mention about uh, this laptop is that um, it has been quite successful and um, it was highly appreciated by um, um, the, the community of um, reviewers and of course it was also appreciated for its design. And I think that uh, this mm, tells a lot about what are the expectations and the performance uh, potential, the marketing approach that could be highly successful and the demand for such high quality screens and uh, form factors. Of course, Asus is no stranger to this because uh, convertible laptops have been offered previously in uh, the Zenbook line. However, one that was uh, as affordable and uh, in such a format was not um, offered until uh, 2021. So I think that this goes on to show um, what kind of potential you can have in terms of uh, product design. This is a particularly demanding test. Um, with a higher spec laptop you can expect around uh, 40 frames per second, but with uh, such a form factor I think that uh, around um, 10 frames per second would be a very good value, as, as I mentioned in, uh, in that particular spot. So probably um, you can have higher expectations for uh, newer models. And I think that the, the model that is uh, currently um, prepared for launch in uh, 2023 will also have an increased uh, amount of uh, storage space available around uh, 512 gigabytes. So this will uh, probably cover just about most uh, expectations uh, about the product. Probably you can also think about uh, doing um, some limited uh, video editing, which is of course is a very popular activity, despite not being a fully fledged uh, workstation or a computer that has a high enough um, performance. In terms of resolution, I do not have um, any major um, complaint. Uh, a full HD uh, screen in a 14.3 uh, inches size, I think it's not uh, it's not a big issue. We have to understand the fact that there are uh, laptops in the 15 inch range that are still being offered with a full uh, HD screen. So having a full HD screen in uh, a 14-inch laptop is not going to be an issue. More so when we consider the fact that uh, the internal um, you know, graphics chipset is not a very high performing one. So uh, pushing for a higher resolution is not going to offer the um, performance you may be hoping for. So this is why I think that um, full HD in, uh, in such a form and strikes, strikes the right balance between uh, performance and uh, price. In terms of features that I would have liked to, to see on such a um, laptop model, or considering more the, the laptop proposes, perhaps it would be better to have uh, more USB ports. Uh, to have um, free USB ports because this would probably make it possible um, to have two ports available at any time. Uh, when you consider the fact that one of them is always um, used by um, the power supply, probably having uh, two more would have been uh, better. But this is uh, a small concern. You can probably carry um, port uh, multiplier or a hub and this one would uh, offer the necessary capability. In terms of display output, yes, uh, probably not having a uh, micro HDMI port is um, a small uh, disappointment. 
particularly when you think that uh, having this sort of flexibility would have been good with, uh, with such a laptop. But again, you have to think about the fact that there are tablets that do not have uh, these features. So I'm not overly concerned about them, but probably there is um, a lot of space uh, for improvements. In terms of uh, capabilities to show uh, content, um, I think that the primary purpose would be for uh, web browsing and in this respect uh, I think it handles uh, the tasks quite well. It can also run um, videos in uh, native uh, HD resolution with um, reasonable uh, CPU um, usage, I think that around 20 or 30 uh, percent. Of course, there would be a lot of um, space uh, for improvements and I'm expecting uh, both uh, software and hardware improvements uh, in time to provide a lot of um, advance uh, in uh, this respect. Alright, what else uh, can, uh, can I mention? I think that the biggest uh, gripe I have with uh, the laptop unfortunately is uh, the software bundle. I think that the software bundle has not been optimized enough considering the, um, the performance uh, level of the processor. Overall you can see quite um, a reasonable value in terms of um, CPU performance. Um, reasonable one for uh, graphics and a very good one for storage. I think that storage is the best, um, is the highest spec um, component that has been used and this is very uh, useful and it's one of the reasons probably why Asus uh, chose to also offer uh, for um, a gigabyte uh, storage, uh, a four gigabytes uh, RAM solution because the storage could easily um, supplement the amount of memory being uh, made available. Uh, another important aspect about memory is that um, the 2023 model is expected to have um, uh, DDR5 memory instead of DDR4 which will probably bring a, a boost uh, in terms of uh, performance and will also be felt in uh, terms of graphics because uh, graphics intensive um, uh, games um, have a benefit of uh, increased uh, memory bandwidth. So I think that uh, the model that is going to be um, available in, uh, in 2023 and the lineup that is going to be complemented will be uh, highly appreciated. Alright, and uh, probably the next important um, aspect you may uh, consider besides uh, the CPU is how well it handles uh, networking and I will immediately show uh, you what we are uh, we are seeing over here. I'm just going to go and uh, show you part of the performance metrics even if uh, most of them are not going to be uh, really important unless you're going to compare it with other models that are in a similar category. Alright, let's uh, open a web browser and see what we can find over here. Okay, let's run the speed test. In some ways it's going to be um, a reasonable uh, proof of performance. In others, of course, it will depend on particular results. In this case, we are using a Wi-Fi 6 uh, router. It's placed at around um, 3 meters from the laptop, so it's not going to be particularly relevant to your situation, but mostly about the potential maximum performance 
you will uh, reach. But I think this uh, information is going to be reliable enough because mm, when we are considering um, the, the setup, you also take into account that there is not a direct line of sight between uh, the laptop and uh, the router. Uh, there is a, a wall that separates them, so probably uh, you can consider it a reasonable enough uh, situation. All right? I'm expecting over 300 uh, megabits per second performance because of um, the distance and uh, the propagation possibility. Okay, we did the value. The ping is quite at a good uh, value. I was hoping for 3 milliseconds, but 5 is enough. And the upload performance can be reasonably expected to be at similar values. Yes, so quite a good performance. Um, if the value doesn't drop uh, to less than uh, 300 megabits per second, I think it's um, a good uh, performance value. Okay, so this was the test. And if we are looking at uh, videos, uh, I hate these uh, pop-ups. Okay, let's accept all and see what happens. And let's run one of the recent videos and see. Okay, and change the resolution so that it's full. And now let's see how much CPU usage we can expect. You can see that it hovers around 30%. Uh, this is the expected level of performance. It could have been better, but I think it's uh, reasonable enough for this kind of um, test. Um, ultimately, if you will look closely at uh, the screen and the quality, I think that it uh, provides quite a... Um, quite a good uh, image quality. You can uh, slightly make some uh, changes in the um, Intel uh, Graphics Command Center in order to uh, tweak it a bit, and I think this is going to be helpful to, to some users. But ultimately, um, the amount of choices presented to the user is not going to be um, any higher than the basic uh, one. All right, so you can see some of those settings, adaptive contrast enhancements, I think this one is not reasonable, uh, is not uh, useful. You can use uh, HDR content, you can change the um, display's color depth to 10 bits per color, which would offer uh, HDR capabilities, but in my case uh, I have never seen the reason to enable this kind of format. Alright, and you can make various um, color changes. Uh, in general, when I'm setting a laptop or I'm setting the, the screen, I'm trying to aim, um, I'm aiming mostly for um, a good enough reproduction with the minimum amount of um, enhancement features. The out-of-box experience is going to be, of course, more lively and uh, having uh, an increased uh, contrast, but I think this one is uh, a reasonable uh, compromise. And um, if you have uh, watched closely, you may have noticed that there were no uh, major uh, 3D graphics settings. And I think this is um, a disappointment in, in some uh, situations because um, you may have wished to uh, disable um, anti-aliasing or um, um, to have a different uh, texture filtering, however, you don't have any choice in uh, this matter. It's just uh, the default ones that are going to be applied no matter what. So I think that uh, this is a small disappointment, but ultimately that's um, how uh, things are. Okay, I think this one shows very well what you can expect. 
It's the typical situation for uh, integrated uh, Intel graphics, so you don't have to expect uh, anything spectacular. Probably when uh, Intel Iris uh, graphics is going to be uh, integrated, not uh, in uh, the um, um, product refresh that we are expecting in 2023, possibly in 2025 or something like that, uh, the amount of performance uh, made available will probably be uh, seriously improved. So overall, <clears throat> if we are looking at this uh, uh, model, what is my um, opinion on it? I think that it fares fantastic in terms of being an affordable OLED um, laptop and tablet combination. I don't think you can have a better product or any sort of product in uh, in this uh, range available from the other manufacturers like um, um, Acer, uh, HP, Dell or others. And this means that um, it has a very good uh, market position. And I think that um, if you want to have a portable laptop that is going to be very light, because ultimately you are looking at a product that is around uh, half a kilo with all the accessories, um, is going to fare very well, it was going to have uh, very good mobility. Um, it's going to be dead silent, which uh, for some users is uh, actually perfect. And it will also be able to do just about anything pertaining to light um, usage uh, as um, an office uh, computer or as one used for uh, light uh, graphics editing. And I think that it fares very well in all of these respects. Perhaps um, the ability to be used without a, an additional power source, meaning using it only on battery, is not the one I would expect. And the performance of the processor, which could have been higher, but of course uh, the expectations have to be uh, slightly uh, reduced due to the form factor. So probably we have to expect um, uh, the new generation to have a good performance. But if you find this laptop at around uh, 500 euros or even less, or around uh, the same amount in dollars, I think it's a very good purchase that you're not going to regret, particularly when you think about the screen. And I'm stressing the screen and I'm repeating myself so many times because uh, OLED screens have a fantastic color and contrast. And you cannot um, understand how much we uh, missed in um, having good screens with our uh, laptops. And one of the most important aspects is to have such a capability. And in just about any mobile device, particularly when you think about um, the, the impact it could make, having a good screen is paramount. And I think that all the other unfortunate uh, compromises that have to be made in terms of uh, autonomy, because of course all its screens uh, require more uh, power to, to operate, uh, particularly when showing uh, bright screens, are going to be uh, acceptable in this context. So again, I think it's one uh, wonderful product and one that I can clearly recommend with the only slight uh, mention of the fact that um, CPU performance may not be uh, to your likely liking, particularly if you have higher demands in terms of uh, processing. But ultimately, as a highly portable laptop, I think that it's simply impossible to have um, a better product, uh, at least for the time being. But it shows a lot what is what kind of uh, potential you can expect and how many um, people can be really uh, enjoying uh, such a product. It's uh, quite light, uh, powerful and has a fantastic screen. And it is going to impact us more in, uh, in terms of our uh, expectations for um, higher uh, quality products and help us in, uh, in our work. So I think that this is a very good one. Um, and also it can be uh, highly successful as one used for uh, study or for other um, purposes like uh, entertainment. And I can uh, clearly say that uh, it's very good. In terms of uh, thickness, yes, sometimes it may feel 
uh, slightly heavier than a tablet and you should be um, understanding this uh, this situation for the moment but I'm entirely sure that um, some uh, further uh, products um, perhaps not this generation but uh, the next one that may appear in uh, around uh, four years will be even better in this respect and in terms of audio quality it's very good for um, a tablet of its uh, size i'm not expecting a, um, a fantastic output but i can clearly say that it sounds good for uh, this purpose so i hope you enjoyed uh, seeing uh, this laptop and uh, the review i made in many ways it was probably over lengthy and uh, didn't cover um, other aspects you may have uh, wanted to know but Ultimately, um, I'm really recommending you to at least have a look at the VivoBook uh, Slate uh, 14 and see if um, this uh, Asus laptop is going to be uh, interesting to you. I really recommend uh, you uh, taking a look. And particularly so if you're not overly concerned with uh, high performance, but a very good screen uh, matters a lot. I have to say that um, in person this screen um, looks much nicer than you can see on the camera. The camera slightly uh, shifts uh, the color and doesn't um, reflect as well the color capabilities. Um, colors are vivid, uh, the contrast is simply fabulous, yet those features cannot be seen uh, in here. And if you wanted to uh, have a final uh, information about the camera okay this is a main camera I don't think it has um, a very high quality but that was uh, to be expected this is the um, rear camera and the front camera okay so I think it has a reasonable um, uh, performance is not going to be a camera that would um, rival uh, the the ones on uh, some uh, even uh, mainstream, not necessarily high-end uh, mobile phones. But I think it's going to be um, decent in most respects. So um, about the software being used, uh, I think that the most important aspect I should have mentioned uh, at the start is the fact that uh, the laptop comes with um, a disk drive that is already using uh, and having an active uh, BitLocker. This means that there is a slight reduction in performance out of the box uh, because the drive is already encrypted. You can uh, disable encryption and you have to look upon um, a tutorial on the internet to, uh, to do such a thing. But this is only if you're concerned with performance. The second gripe I have is with um, the antivirus solution being already installed. It's uh, McAfee. Uh, I don't have a soft spot for McAfee and particularly so when Windows already supplies a good enough um, antivirus solution that um, has um, also a good uh, performance. So having McAfee installed and running even after you uninstall it, um, having some components active I don't think that it's uh, a very good uh, choice. The third one would be that um, um, you have to use the MyAsus software suite. And MyAsus software suite is um, one that can be um, can offer a lot of features. Unfortunately, it's uh, also quite uh, bloated. And unfortunately, you have to uh, have it installed in order to use even the uh, hotkeys for controlling the, the, bright, the screen's brightness, um, the volume and um, other features that uh, are um, uh, suggested over here. And this is an unfortunate aspect because um, unfortunately, MyAsus is a software that uh, uses quite a lot of resources and run permanently. Um, on the computer and one cause of sudden slowdowns and even uh, slight uh, power usage may be uh, this software. So this is a gripe I'm having and I wanted to mention that but um, of course you can um, uninstall it and then use it uh, as is without having the access to uh, the hotkeys. From my point of view it's a disappointment that I have to use my access. 
and there is no other solution as it was in the past just to provide hotkeys and not have any sort of additional software running on the computer. Unfortunately, that's the state of events. And uh, the third one is that you may have noticed that uh, there is a placeholder for various other applications you may not uh, be particularly interested in, like uh, Amazon Prime Video, uh, TikTok and others that I cannot uh, show you any longer. So I think that it's um, a laptop that has a very good performance um, in terms of um, uh, displaying capabilities, less so in terms of um, processing power and particularly my biggest gripe is the fact that the software being supplied with it uh, in some ways it's kind of uh, bloated and um, doesn't make the best use of uh, the platform. Of course those things can be improved and I'm hoping and I'm confident that uh, Asus will take into consideration some of these uh, gripes but overall I think that uh, this product really has opened up um, an important market and uh, I'm glad uh, it uh, did so, the one for affordable, uh, very high quality screens, compact uh, laptops and um, tablets uh, as well, I mean dual function uh, laptop tablets. And I think that this is uh, a very good development, I'm hoping more manufacturers including uh, future products from Asus will um, uh, tackle this market with um, uh, highly knowledgeable uh, designs and a lot of uh, um, enjoyment that uh, can be translated and felt from the from the users uh, themselves because it's a it's a fabulous product we may have dreamed some years ago having all that screen laptops and right now there is a whole lineup that um, increases just about uh, every month uh, or so and i think that it's simply fantastic so i hope you enjoyed the video uh, thank you very much for watching and um, if you wondered uh, i am clearly uh, giving a favorite uh, a recommendation for such uh, for such a laptop despite its shortcomings so have a pleasant day